Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, what's up, everybody? Today we're gonna be launching. Thank God. I spent some time today, kind of going through uh, what we had gotten done, and uh, mm, kind of added some stuff. Like I fixed a couple of minor issues, resolved a couple of design things, built a responsive sheet, so it it's not gonna look great as it gets smaller, but uh, the site will work as it gets smaller, and built a mobile version of the site out that is kind of offensive. So let's get to what we're doing today. The first thing I got to do is kind of silly, uh, but we got to get the footage of it. Um, I got to get footage for Rob. Uh, so he has uh, something to edit from uh, of the old website. <clears throat> Cause for some reason on his computer, when we wrote up, when we load up uh, OBS, it's just a big heaping mess and it can't for some reason do a screen recording. It just, it just doesn't, so it's an issue we can't fix so i got to do it on this side so i just get started with that uh my screen i'm going to turn the camera back on so people remind me if i don't turn that camera back on on this screen um when we're done with this before the launch uh let's get let's get into this so rob you just tell me what you need i'm gonna do like let me let me reload the page and get it let's get it full screen um let me just reload it and what i'm going to do on the first run through is I'm gonna click that Omitum augmented thing and let that run. And once that's done running, I'm gonna do a scroll down the page and kind of stop on each section and play with it a little bit if we need to. So here we go. Oh, does that not work? There we go, refreshed. Let's come here, I'm gonna hover that. And then I'm gonna click this. Something's something slowing that, that little guy down. <laughs> I'm gonna let that sit there for ten or ten or so seconds. And let's start scrolling down. Give you some stuff to cut around here if you need to. Okay, let's go back up to the top. I'm just going to hit this button, let it do its thing for, I don't know, just a little while. Let it kind of show you this other animation it can do. This is an old site, man. I'm surprised it, it's not chunky slow, but it definitely, even on this computer, you can see a little bit of the frame rate drop. We'll let this get a little more filled up. How long do you want me to do this for, Rob? Do you want this just to keep going to the end? Or do you want to just, uh, like, do you have enough at this point? Well, just tell me when, when we're good. I'm just going to sit here flapping my jaw. Nobody has ever seen the end? Yeah. It really, it was an interesting, it was an interesting problem when I did the design for this. Because I was like, I want this thing that shows that there's a lot of things that happen and that they kind of just like create this other thing underneath it. It was weird. It was just a weird idea. I think it's pretty, but I've caught in shit from people for this thing. It might be close to the end. I don't know. Just tell me, tell me whenever you're good. I'm um, jump. Okay. Let's jump over to the about page. Uh, Kresner, why as a not great converting factor? Um, no, people were just giving me shit about it saying like, I don't know, man. Like we had somebody put the site on Hacker News and people were like, this looks like a joke. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> Let's go to the about page. I'll do like a slow scroll here. That's at the bottom. Let me just highlight that. Let's go to the contact page. Let 
do the same thing here. We're just going to highlight the highlightable elements. Show the forms. You know, I should do these all at once. Let me just do them all at once. So now that we have it scrolled down or we can, yeah, it's a little too tall. Damn you, 1920 by 1200 design screens. I just gotta make it, I don't want it to jump like that. All right, Rob, you good? Keep it on general and hover them. Okay. Cool. All right, Rob is good. Let's get that camera back on. Oh, no. Give me one, just one second. Don't you fucking beep at me. There we go. Okay, we're back at it. Now we're back. Now we're back. No more no camera stream. Let's see, is my screen switcher working? Perfect. Okay. Uh, so we're actually going to get this thing launched now. I have a micro launch checklist uh, for when it actually goes up. Um, but let's get rid of this. This oh, We'll leave it there because we're going to have to refresh it and whatever. So I do that, get it back on the homepage. Uh, here is our site ready to launch. I'm just going to double check everything before I put it up. Um, we've got the projects page where we have some copy that Rob did a pretty good job writing. Uh, we have all the projects. There's probably some typos somewhere, but I'm just going to kind of do a quick, quick look and see if there's anything jumping out. Nothing really jumping out. So I'm good with that. I compromised. I'm putting these little circly guys, these little shapes, just put them on the, let them cut in half. It's better than have them on the left. Let's go to the incubator page. Um, we didn't get this done, so we're probably going to do that next week or something. But we just kind of, we got the element in. Do a quick, make sure all these are in there. Okay, make sure the copy has actually been written. Yes. Yes. Studio page. Oh, yeah. I did a little fade over here to kind of get the lines to fade in from the side. That is definitely a link going to where it needs to link to. And it's Hypnotoad. Okay. Got a careers page. Okay. About page. Okay. Contact page. Okay. So the form is the something on our checklist to see if it works. But for now, it works locally. Like it does the validation and all that stuff it needs to do. <clears throat> all right. Easy mode on how we're going to deploy this. We have Netlify. So let's log into Netlify. Log in. Okay. So we use Netlify for, as you can see, a ton of shit. <laughs> and Netlify is a static site host. Like if you have to do anything like with PHP or Ruby or anything like that, Netlify ain't your thing. If you got to put up a static website that just sort of exists, Netlify works. So here's our, our site that's already been configured. The last time we deployed it was like two years ago from Bitbucket. So since then, we've moved the repo on to GitHub. Um, I'm going to take some time now to kind of like I've, I, I need to make sure that the repo is localized. I'm going to delete everything in it minus maybe one or two things um, and then put the new one in and then commit it and push it. And then we're going to come to Netlify and connect it back to the GitHub or connect it to the GitHub repo. And then from the GitHub repo, it's going to be like blah right on a Netlify. So it's a pretty simple process. It could screw up. There's a lot of things that can screw up here. So let's just go through it kind of slow. Uh, I have Git Kraken. Git Kraken is like sort of my preferred Git UI tool. Uh, it's uh, it's definitely capable of doing what we needed to do today. <laughs> um, you can see that we have our repo localized somewhere here. Let me see if I can open up that folder. Is there a button? I think I'll just have to go find it. <clears throat> and like I said, we're just going to delete everything because by keeping it in the same repo, we can always step backwards if we need to. Let's go look at that. So it's going to be in project right there. So it's got all this stuff in here. So this right here, we might need a hookup, 
this is the localized fonts. I might have to hook those up, but I don't think I need need to. So we've got some folders here for the old site. Anything in here we want to keep? Probably the README. And then we'll just uh, keep the README and the robots and everything else will blap out. See you later. And as you can see, Git Kraken immediately says, oh, geez, you did something here. <laughs> but the beauty of using something like Git is you have a, a permanent undo. And yeah, that's why we use it. So now we're going to go find our other site right here, the 2020 new site. Grab all this. I'm just going to copy it in there. Go to the static site. Paste it in. Boom. So that should all be good. We have uh, this thing telling us that we modified a bunch of crap. We unstaged a bunch of crap. We're going to stage all the changes now. Boom. It's telling us, okay, so you're committing to delete all this stuff. You're committing to add all these other things. And as long as nothing, there, there doesn't look like there's a git ignore file, so everything should just go. Should just go right over. So we'll say new site. Boom. Named our commit. And now we're going to push that up. I might have to hit commit first. It's in the corner. Missed it. There we go. Now push that up to GitHub. Well, that's doing that. Skeins, yeah, we made it responsive. We made it like barely responsive. We made it work at different resolutions for sure. And we're going to try to get better coverage over time. But right now we're just trying to make it, make sure it is there and doesn't break. So there we go. We're up on the new site thing here. So let's go to Netlify and let's tell Netlify it's time to, uh, it's time to push it. So we go to build and deploy. Right now you can see it's pointed at the wrong repo. So we're just going to do edit settings, link it to a different repository, go to my GitHub. Okay. And we're going to go to the Omatum GitHub. And then <clears throat> let's see if we can find it. Omatum. Hmm. What does that mean? Configure the Netlify app on GitHub. Because we should see more than this. Oh boy. Yeah, let's configure that. Ah, ah, that's smart. So you have to, you could say all repositories, but just in case something happens funky at Netlify, we'll just, we'll, we'll allow it to use these one by one. All right, so Netlify is doing that thing. Uh, yeah, what are we spinny boying? Come on. Come on. What are we working on? Waiting for API Netlify.com. Oh, boy. Okay, good sign. <laughs> so now we go here. It's going to tell us here's our branches we could deploy. We don't need a build command because we're not doing anything fancy pants. Publish directory is probably just the base directory. Let's just deploy it. Give it a minute. It's queued up. And so now Netlify is is doing like a Git pool from GitHub. Uh, and then they're sticking it on their server. And then they're going to do some... Well, they're just going to do some stuff before they publish it. So now it's been published. Now immediately we should see it because everything else is hooked up. DNS is all hooked up. So if I refresh this... Boom! There it is. She's live. So you guys, if you want to go see it now, I'm going to paste it for you. Kablap. Yeah. And I know you're going to be tempted to say, I, I moved my monitor around in a very specific way and it looks like shit. But listen, <laughs> it's not going to look great. Let's try a form submission. So we'll just do Craig. Is he uh, at my momentum email? And hey, submit the form. Submission received. So I should get that on my phone in about a second. It says it processed. <clears throat> Boom. Got it. Boop. That's great. So our first major test passed. Uh, let's see what else we got. Resolves on domain. 
Does it load for Rob? We got to know. The fave ICO has changed and it's there. Awesome. The forms work. Let me check it on my phone. The phone experience is different <laughs> than what you see right there. Omatum.com. Oh, yeah. Yep, it works. It works on my phone. It's not perfect, but it works. I don't really care. <laughs> you guys, look at, the, you can't hardly see it. Uh, let me bring it up. Let me tell Chrome to bring up the mobile. Yeah, you're supposed to. If you squeeze the desktop window, you're supposed to get the mobile. That's right. So Chrome has an ability to kind of give you this, this screen. I'll show you guys how to do that. Just, whoop, deep. I'll show you how to do it. All right. You come here and you tell it the screen size by enabling the device toolbar. And up here, we can just say like, let's just show me what it looked like on a Pixel 2 XL. Oh, that font is not supposed to look like that, FYI. So I got to fix that. Let me fix that guy. Let me inspect it and see what the hell happened here. Font size of four rem probably needs to be two. Yeah, two rem. Yeah. All right. So we just have one thing to fix that I could find. Give me one second. I got to open up the new folder because we moved it. And then the, the, the process of fixing this is so easy. It's so, so easy. So we just go here to the static site. Uh, we open that folder up. Yep. Thanks for that sublime text. Uh, then we go, oh, I opened up the CSS folder on mistake by mistake. It just that one. Yep. Wow. Does that the biggest that you thought you should be sublime text? Get a lot of work done right there. Come over here. And I know I know the font's tiny. Sorry. This is this is just a quick fix. Uh so yeah, two rem. Boom. Save that. Ho did we just watch it process or not? And now that it's inside of a repo, you can see these little dots that show you stuff that hasn't been um Pro, that, that's been updated. So I don't see one next to this. So because the CSS hasn't recompiled, I'm curious why that hasn't been recompiled. Let me check. Yeah, so just the layout. So it's probably pre-pros. Ah, uh, yeah, pre-pros. So we're going to remove the old project. Maybe we can just point it at the new directory. Let me see. Nope. Okay, let me close that. Remove this old project. Yeah. And then we'll add we'll add the new one. Cause we rebased it. Add it. Boom. And now it should it should have the old settings. Let me see. Boop. Yep. So now we got that little blue dot next to core CSS, meaning that, that that's been modified. And we'll just do quick layout fix. Mobile layout fix. And then commit stage, commit, push. And then just to make sure it does that, we go back to Netlify. We should be able to hit refresh. And boom, we see the new one going in. And now it's published. So I should be able to refresh this. And there it is. Awesome. I was kind of an asshole here, but I thought, like, you get a little bit of an experience. <laughs> and if you want to... <laughs> You want to tilt your head sideways. You can see this. I'm I'm happy with it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so Krasner, you actually like the way it looks on mobile. I hope you're not being being like facetious, but I thought it was an okay thing. I thought it was like, well, we'll do like one fancy thing and then just sort of say go look at it on desktop. So the other thing we could do here while we're looking at it is I can show you that we did do a tall boy screen. So if you happen to have a uh, vertical monitor, let's say it's 1200 by 1920, it should, it should look okay. Oh, not that one though. So maybe I didn't cover on this correctly. Hold on. Hold on. I did it. And I think I must've undone. Okay, let's let's take a look at that then. I'll up the font now that we're kind of in here. Go to responsive. So I kind of had to do this thing here where at a certain size, I'm gonna knock it off and say like you're in 
you're on a phone. But I don't think the smart thing to do here was, let me see, this one. This one's probably a little too early. So we'll say the max width will be 1023 pixels, which should get you, um, well, actually, no, it's, yeah, that should get you what we need. So save that. Let me check it over here in local first. Okay, so it's still, it's still trying to prefer, oh, there we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. So it'll still look okay on a super vertical monitor. It's not like we went and fixed everything. I just wanna make it, if you're on a vertical monitor, it's not supposed to look great. <laughs> and let's just make sure that's still gonna work for the phone. Yep, still catches the phone. What about an iPad? Still catches that for the iPad, okay iPad Pro. Well, then you get the you get the nice boy on the iPad Pro. Awesome. So on your phone, the screen doesn't scroll all the way. What phone do you have, Cam? Let's see if we can load a device profile before we do another commit here. I'm just gonna check these to make sure. So yeah, on the Galaxy S5, it cuts off. I'm, you want to hear something really screwy? I'm okay. I actually kind of want it to cut off. If that's what it's looking like on yours, I'm fine with it. Because all we really want is check us out in your desktop showing. Okay, perfect. You're on iPhone 8. Uh, well, iPhone 8 definitely has a little bit more market share. Hmm. But I just, I, I got to figure out how would we, what's going on here that's making this happen? So that's tiny boy. That's like 375 wide. Is that, no, it's like that on iPhone X. This is where it gets really hard to figure out how to fix that. 360. I mean, you'd have to, we'd have to dial in like a max height or something. Oh yeah. An iPhone five, it just is gonzo. What I would probably have to do here is what are we thinking? It might be the height of the page. So at six, six sixty seven, we lose it. Seven thirty six, It's fine. Eight twelve. So maybe anything less than seven, 700 height. Yeah, let's do that. Anything less than 700 height, we will make the, the the header smaller. Okay. So this is going to be a bunch of ands here. Max width doesn't matter. Oh, it probably does. Max width 1023 and orientation portrait and... Max height 700. I, I kind of know that you're on a phone at this point, right? Uh, let's see. Mobile viewport headline. Font size. Let's try 1.5 rem. There we go. That should fix it. That's fine if it's glitched. All right. Let me save that and then stick it in here and say mobile oh, tiny, tiny boy phone fix. Stage it. Commit it. Boom. Push it. We probably should have checked and see if that jacked anything else. <laughs> uh, we probably should have double checked that. It probably wouldn't because it's contained to the phone. Fuck the Surface Duo. I don't even know what that thing is. Galaxy Fold. Yeah, we're looking. We're looking okay. We're looking good enough. Cool. Well, we launched it. 
Is there anything else on our checklist we need to go through here? It loads on my phone. Loads for Rob. We done? I think we might be done. Awesome. Well, guys, I really appreciate everybody hanging out for a couple days and getting this thing to a really cool point. Like, I think uh, this is a really fun site that we can come back to in the future and make little iterative changes to when we have some spare time. There's a lot of fun stuff we could have done with it, but we had to pull back because of the time constraints. Um, we'll probably update the copy pretty shortly. But we just really need we really need to get this thing done because we have uh, we're publishing our video tomorrow, and we didn't want people to land on the old site and be like, "What in the world is this thing?" Um, so we really just yeah, like I said, we just really wanted to get something out quick that was really on a deadline the whole time. But I feel like uh, you guys were a great help. Is there anything you guys want to talk about? I got a little bit of time if we want to kind of like get into something else. Anything anybody needs help with or wants to want to, wants to hear my opinion on? <laughs> you don't want to hear my opinion on stuff. It's it's no good. <laughs> What was the goal of the redesign? So Krasner, we're, um, we kind of approached it from this perspective of we wanted to modernize the site a little bit and also re repurpose the, the content because, uh, and I, I don't mean repurpose in the sense of like reuse. I mean more like we wanted to, we, we have a different company now than we had like five years ago. So we originally, when we originally launched that page, it was done in haste uh, uh, before we were sending pitch decks out. So I created that with a completely different intention. You know, now we're different. We are an incubator more than we're a, uh, the, more than we're a, a, a monolithic software company uh, because we were, we were, Omitum was just this suite of software where now it's, um, we're treating it more like it's just our incubator. It's where our ideas go to be developed. And Skanzy said it would take, take it two days to do the homepage. Yeah, well, there, we, we cut corners for sure. And they didn't bite us too hard, but we can do more. We can do better on this over time. Uh, do I make a living with my own company? No, so the the company here, Omitum doesn't have any. Well, we have like one product out there, but it it was something I was able to do because of other things. Um, I took a a kind of gamble going into it, but I started five or so years ago, five six years ago, and I've been doing it ever since. They kind of like slowly was at some at one point I was I had Omitum as a company. I was trying to pitch it, but I was also taking on client work. And then a few years ago, I just sort of said, well, we don't need the money. So I'm going to stop doing the client work and just focus on the company. And so when I started streaming a couple of years ago, you, that, like the first time I was streaming was very close to that decision. It was very close to a decision where I said, I'm only doing this. I'm doing it full time. And we're just going to turn it into the thing I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, so since then, since two years ago, uh, we've launched a couple things and we've got a couple things up to prototype level. Uh, and we've ex now expanded the business to include the content end because I kind of had this philosophy originally of wanting to do exclusively, uh, enterprise level products, but they're really expensive, <laughs> like way outside, of, way outside of what I can afford to put the bill for, or I could do like one of them and <laughs> just hope, but, uh, I had this kind of conception that we could probably bring some people in to do content and hedge the idea of an incubator because it seems like people like to watch software being made. Um, and by having content involved, we might be able to kind of have a sustainable business unit from content, you know? 
And so now the company has evolved from being only software and a guy that goes on Twitch every so often to software uh, and a studio. Um, and they're sort of like, they're in a symbiotic relationship. But what happened with the studio is kind of, or what happened uh, was kind of weird. Like at the beginning, beginning of the year, uh, we had started this idea out and uh, it was something that I, I just sort of convinced myself I wanted to do. Uh, and we started floating it around and trying to get advice on it and talking to people. Uh, and to, you know, I had a friend of mine that had stepped up and said like, Oh geez, this sounds like something we want to be involved in. And they were going to, we were going to be strategic partners or rather like true partners on it and go 50, 50. But unfortunately they, they got hit hard by the COVID stuff and their business took a hit. And as a result, they became extremely risk adverse and uh we had to we had them pull out early so with this new model of a studio and an incubator we've kind of been playing i've been playing catch up for a few months to kind of understand that new reality it's not the end of the world it's just definitely changed our plans for it how's it going snag I'm so happy we got this done. I was a little worried like Tuesday night. There's so many little things that if I had like an hour, like when I find myself with an hour here or there, there are things, there are things I will be doing. I'm going to animate the tits out of this thing. <laughs> Slamming your head into the keyboard. That's not good. Are you stuck on something? Like what's going on? I know it's a lot of text on the red page. We we had a different red page we we're gonna do, um, but we didn't get to it. Like it was gonna take another day, so we kind of just like phoned that one in. I do like that though. That little transition state. I like this a lot. This is like my favorite thing on the site. It's that little ambience. You're a developer that develops without know-how. Okay. So it's the business model we're building up to. So kind of interesting. Well, we still have the traditional incubator model and that I can kind of explain it. Uh, so we obviously we take ideas and move them through states, right? Where it gets a little interesting is when you get to the development stage um, here. So when we're here, we we kind of have to make a call as to whether or not we're going to launch a product and we have stuff kind of stuck here. The business model though, is generally to get prototypes built out to this, this level and then figure out where to go next. So the next step could be a launch uh, that could either, that could either be out of like, it's easy. It doesn't need maintenance or like we're fairly confident we can scale if we need to. Um, but the launch would be the next step and then scaling as a final step is the incubator obviously that's the incubator's final final model but scaling typically means spinning so that's where we, ultimately we want to get a couple things there in the next five or six years where we have at least one or two things that we were able to spin and sell off or spin and scale internally but eventually the omitum incubator essentially creates another company and says like it has its own employees and all that crap or we break it off and let it be acquired by somebody. But to me, acquisition is never really an ultimate goal. It's just like, it's just like sometimes you build stuff where it's like, you know, it you, you kind of think it can take off, but you don't want to scale it. You just like, that's going to be the biggest headache in the world to scale it. There's a lot of things out there in the world like that, where you can just foresee endless amounts of problems with them. Um, we have one that one in the project queue right now called DCC. That's kind of in that space where it's i can prototype it but i'm still trying to figure out what exactly it is uh but it's this thing that, that we believe will make traffic systems safer it's kind of a weird way to say something i just i don't like giving away ideas if i don't have to um but 
from a legal standpoint, it's going to be hard. There's existing laws that will let it work. There's going to be a lot of public backlash and working with legislators. You, we, it's basically something we'd want to pilot in one city or one state, but getting it rolled out further than that, getting that beachhead is not something I would ever do. So that's a particular product that if we built it, I'd sell it as fast as I could. So if we got it to a prototype and it like it looks like it works, great. I don't want to sit here and I don't want to be going on TV shows trying to convince people that this is a good idea. I don't want to be talking to senators trying to grease their palms to make this thing work. Let somebody else do that. Give me my money. See you later. And we do want to have some things that are internal that, you know, people use and all that. But uh, the, you know, primary goal of an incubator is just to get things out of the incubator. It's weird to say that, but that is, that is the goal. So maybe we get something out, like we have a product out there right now called Bug Plug. If that got more attention and people liked it, we put some more development into it and it was making, let's say, $10,000 a month, maybe five, I would probably hire somebody and be like, that's your company now and I'm your boss. <laughs> like, but but that's sort of another goal. How big is the code base? Uh, Schlong for which one? For the site we just did? Don't I think it takes time to market it though? Bug plug is always something. Yeah, Krasner, there, there's there's stuff. Again, we we have these points right where we can put th something into hold on a point, and we put we put bug plug on the hold on hold at this point. So at the point of launch, so we we kind of said like we had a guy we built that partic in particular for a salesperson that we had we had working with us at the time because it's, we thought it would be easy for him to sell it. And he never developed it. So I was like, well, I don't, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to make that my thing. I feel like the technology that's there is restricted by the, the available browser technology. And when that gets better, maybe we revisit it. But we had a lot of like weird issues that were going to take a lot of time to fix. Um, so yeah, it, it, when you start playing the marketing game, you understand there's a lot of money that you have, you have to be comfortable with a big investment when you start moving products. There's people out there that'll tell you, oh, just grow it slow or whatever, just grind and hustle. No, you really shouldn't. I don't think that's the way to do it. I think you you, you commit to a $10,000 or $20,000 uh, a month spend and you see if it works or not. You know, because like at, you're going to, there's a certain amount that you need to spend to make it profitable. And I got that really drilled into my head when I was doing retail a couple of years ago that if you want to tip your, dip your toes in, you're, you're only dipping your toes in and you can dip your toes in for a little while to kind of figure out where the sale conversion numbers are. But typically it's like, it's a game where the more money you can stick into it, the more money you'll make. That's not true with all the digital marketing. It totally is, man. My experience has been marketing it, anywhere where you can buy ads, somebody else is buying ads there too. So you are going to spend a lot of money and you have to have good price points and good, you have to have something that financially makes sense to spend that much money on. When I was in retail, we would, uh, we would be comfortable. Um, we would be comfortable kind of like spending overspending for first purchase. So if like your first month is 10 bucks a month, we'd be comfortable spending 20 because we knew we could hold a customer for three months. Um, so your business went from 15 a day to 1500 a day. I don't know. I think, but I think you need to be comfortable doing that. I guess is what I'm saying. Krasner. You've got to be able to like dedicate to it and then be comfortable knowing that you can, that there's a market that's big enough to take the, the spend, you know? And I just don't know about that with every product. Like if we spent, uh, $10,000 a month, which is but 300 bucks a day ish. Uh, would we, would we be able to get that to come back to us? And we, would we be comfortable with hanging it? Right. And I just never was comfortable with hanging it there. They're saying like, we'll spend that when we convert customers, we'll probably be losing money on conversion, but gaining it back with retention. It becomes a totally different thing at that point. Whereas other things we look at, we, I, I, I'm really leaning more towards like upfront purchase, you know, like shitty as that sounds, but being a small team, like doing retention is really hard. And my, I would say my future 
the next thing I try to monetize, I think I'm going to try to do something where it's like a one-time upfront purchase, but with like additional things you could have. So it's kind of like upsell after the fact, you know, Hey, Krasner, look, I'm, I would be totally open to bringing a marketer on <laughs> for bug plug. And if they can get it to the right point, I will find a developer to stick on it. Yeah, I was really surprised with it. That like we never we ever actually never did marketing with it, you know. It's sitting there. I'll have to do some updates on the website, but I think it's sitting there. I think it still works. I don't know. I assume it still works. Yeah, there she is. Uh, would he be willing to move to Jacksonville, Florida? <laughs> I guess that's the question. I don't work with remote people, man. I try not to, at least. Would he be willing to move to Jacksonville, Florida, and then possibly Spokane, Washington? This website was so much fun to build, man. I don't think the website needs any any updates. Just a little minor things. Uh, why don't I do remote? Uh, I just, I don't know. I've never had good luck doing remote. I feel like I bring people onto teams to get them to be a part of the culture. You know? We did a lot of work on this though, just to have it like what we were, we had a hope on this, but losing that guy so early, like, like literally I launched this and he bailed and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like he bailed after like two weeks. It's cheap. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not a big, I don't love remote. I know there's people out there that really they, they're big proponents for remote. Um, but I just don't, I'm not, I'm not them. I'm, I'm more of a traditional company guy. Like I like, I like having people in the office. I like the, I like the conversations that take place. I like the really quick, uh, iteration that can take place. Um, I think you lose that remote. Like there's no way to have, I just think there's no way to have it remote. And there's a lot of like, accountability as well. Remote, you know? If I remember correctly, I have an Asian wife. That's okay. You could have just said, I have a wife, Schlong. Jesus. She's doing good. <laughs> like, what a matter. I have a German wife. This is a little chunky boy, though. I've Something happened in Chrome where we lost optimization for SVGs because that is that's not your screen doing that. It is that slow. But something happened, and I would love to know what it was that happened. That boy's silky smooth. This one too. That other one, not so much. It was totally fine a couple of years ago. Anyways. I'm so happy we have a new site. I'm not embarrassed of it <laughs> as much. Not as much. Krasner, maybe it's something about, maybe it's because I'm running OBS. Who who knows? But yeah, you're, I would love, I'd love to talk to your friend if he's willing to move. But I, I don't know. I, what we need is we need, we've been talking about like, I mean, isn't that what we have on our studio site right now? I think it is. Yeah, so we might we might be able to work something out because we probably slot them into the studio, and there's not that much marketing that has to be done for the studio. You know, is uh, Schlag? I didn't mean to call you out. I'm sorry if that was a cultural thing. Yeah, it it's not it's not like the best thing to do to mention somebody's uh, race or their ethnicity if it's not necessary. It's sort of a weird. It's, I guess, I don't know if that's an American thing or not, but you would just, here you would just say wife 
or partner or something like that, you, 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 we tend not, we tend to try not to identify people, uh, by their race. I don't know if it's rude. It's just kind of like a weird, I don't know why we do that here. I feel like it's descriptive. <laughs> it's definitely descriptive to be like, Hey, cause like, wouldn't, wouldn't that be interesting? Like, I wonder if it's for races and not countries. Because if you had said, don't you have a Chinese wife? I'd be like less inclined to see that as a weird thing. I'd still be a little inclined. Yeah, so Chris, maybe that's it. There's no need to specify. So you just don't do it. So maybe that's it. Like, yeah, if you don't need to do it to make the to ask the question, it's rude, I guess. I don't know if it's rude or insensitive or what. Weird. We live in a weird world where you got to be careful what you say because there's a lot of people out there that have different ways of thinking about themselves. Ken Wolf, what if you had four sons and one of them was fat and three of them were not? <laughs> and you couldn't remember their name. What's his name? What's his name? Ralph? Fat Ralph? Is that his name? Fat Ralph? Oh boy, Matrix time. How quick can we Matrix this thing out? Let's see. We in it now, boys. If I, I have to rotate, I have to move this just a little bit like that, and then it should. Yeah, let's just put that mouse there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a growth specialist. His name is Joseph. Okay. You don't think he'd move? Where are you guys right now, Krasner? Cannot remember. He's in Utah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I'd... First of all, I would not move to Jacksonville, Florida. Given given an opportunity to move here again, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Rob just moved here. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I wouldn't do it. We're trying to move somewhere out west. We're trying to go, like... I'm pretty sure we're settled on Spokane, but we're just waiting for the right house now. It sucks. We actually found one that was perfect and had been on the market for a long time. And we were like getting really close to doing it. Like really close. And then nope, it went, it went off the market. Somebody bought it right before us. And what really sucked is they paid like 5% under asking. And we had talked to the agent and we were like, we're going to do this all remotely. And we're like, we're going to send somebody over we just need them to walk through the place really quick, make sure it is w the way it is in the photos and do a floor plan. But we're completely willing to put an offer down. And the agent was like, no, we're not going to do that. This is the, the, the buyers weren't considering more options. And we were, we would have totally done their asking price. Like, no, if we had been told, like if, if they had seen our offer, it would have been more than the, what they got. And that's a real kick in the ass. We're trying though. We're we're still seeing if the new buyers will take take our money. But we'll have to move all all these things here. Move our office. This beautiful office. We'll have to cut that wall, that wall decal off the wall, and just move the whole drywall situation. God. It's so weird. It took us like a month to set this place up too. Just think of moving it. Well, anyways, guys, I can't spend I can't spend all day on stream today. We had to cut it. We have to kind of cut it short. Um, we have a ton of work I have to do and Rob has to do today to get ready for our video launch tomorrow. Um, just the thumbnail alone is a question mark. We don't know what we're going to do. But tomorrow at about 4 or 5 p.m., uh, I don't know if we settled on a time yet. Maybe it's 5 p.m. Uh, keep a lookout on our YouTube channel. If you get a notification, awesome. If you're in our Discord, awesome because you'll get the notification there. But that's when we're going to drop it. This video took us two months to get done. If you can kind of think of like what that could look like. A two-month video. Don't get 
your hype, your hopes too high, but it's, I think it's one of the most important things ever like that we've, that I, we could have done. And if it does well, uh, if it does well, we're possibly going to, we're, it'll open the door for to us make, to make more content like that. So we're really hoping it does well. Um, but we're really, we're working on the way to write it and we're trying to work on ways to promote it and all that kind of stuff and like get it in front of the right people. Because again, if it does well, if we get a good hit on it, we understand we're sort of a new YouTube channel, but like, look there, we got to see that. We got to see the spoke. Like we got to see that little, like that little light of possibility there. And, uh, yeah. So we got to get to work on that though. And thanks for the good luck, Krasner. Thanks, man. We'll check out that thumbnail thing too. I thought I think our thumbnails are awesome. Well, I don't know what, why you're telling giving us advice. I will show you some of our thumbnails. Let's just look at it really quick before I get going. Whoa. Look at these thumbnails. How can you not think that's an amazing thumbnail? LinkedIn is the worst social net perfect. So I got a guy, he's holding money. You got this chick saying worst implementation ever possible these are fucking oh sorry about that get that out of here we have the best thumbnails <laughs> come on you get that guy you got this lady they're good i think they're good i, I will definitely watch the video but i feel like i don't know I, I almost feel like there's a lot of credence put in the thumbnail creation but so far, we have not seen a difference. If we put a thumbnail on something that looks like that, it does just as good as something that looks like that. You know? Look at these thumbnails. We got a cat. I tried this cat photo once. Let's put a cat on there. Can we make that bigger? Yeah. I was like, maybe a cat will work. Maybe this like head thing will work. Maybe the devil in front of HTML tables will work. I don't know. We try. <laughs> we definitely try. I don't, I, I think it's, it's sort of this thing where like you have to, as a new YouTuber, you have to have, there's a reason we push the channel so hard here because the first like year of having a YouTube channel, it's freaking crazy. It's freaking crazy. It's hard. I know it'd be like, well, you can read the text. It's just tiny because it's in this one interface. So if we maybe did it like. See. So like in the search results, it's bigger, it's like big enough to be legible. So we do the thumbnails with the, with the search in mind, not, uh, not a playlist in mind. We figure it's in a playlist already. Well, on mobile, it's even bigger. So if we did, oh boy, I think we actually have to tell it it's on mobile, I think, cause that looks really weird. Meanwhile, like a minute ago, I was like, well, I'm getting out of here. Where's the thing that you actually tell it's on mobile? Oh, sweet Jesus. That's mobile? Fuck, that's not mobile. You wouldn't be able to read it. Ah, there we go. You had to refresh it. Yeah. So, like, I, I just think, you know, we try our best. We try our best. And... I think it's that's a better thumbnail than this thing. But look, it's not about thumbnails, right? It's about content. It's about people searching for things. It's about it's about YouTube putting you where you need to be. Because if we type in like HTML tables, like there's a bajillion other videos that make more sense than ours. So it's like getting the right search ranking, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring in a a growth specialist that had uh, that knew what they're doing on YouTube. Or at least would be able to be the guy or girl in the office that was uh, was on top of that because there's just so there's so many things, there's so many things to figure out, and it's a lot for two people, you know. Well, I like the app too. You know what the app is missing is a sleep timer, because sometimes I like to listen to uh, radio on YouTube. Is the majority of YouTube watched on mobile? I don't think so, Krasner. I don't think so. Let me, I got to be careful about this, but let me just open this up. I can tell you. I can tell you based on our channel where it's been watched. Analytics. Let's see. Um, 
Papa. The audience. I swear they, they tell you somewhere. Advanced mode. Device type. Yeah, I guess so. Shit, I didn't realize that. 64% of all of our views come from mobile. Which is funny. Look at the difference, though, between, like, watch time. We have, like, way better stickiness on a computer. Because our content isn't really made for mobile. If that makes sense. Like, our content's made for computer screens. It's, like, made for Twitch. Big, big boy screens. We might want to keep that in mind. That's probably why when you go see a coding tutorial on YouTube, it's like, hey, uh, welcome to my coding tutorial. Let me show you how to do things. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, why is this thing? Why does this thing look like this? Rob, keep that in mind, man. We're going to need to start doing this. Watch we do that. That's the big thing that changes it. Like, oh yeah, now, now people actually watch it. I could not even, I couldn't even deal. I could not deal with this. Uh, I just don't want to deal with it. Oh, wait, just like that. This is the size I keep it on. So it looks good. Uh, it's something to think about. So our next videos that we're going to be doing after this one, um, we're going to have <clears throat> we're going to have, we're going to do a small series, uh, about like how to do something, but it's not really a tutorial. It's just more like a conceptual, how to do something. And Rob, what do we have outside of that? Can I have it show normal on my end and change it with OBS? Uh, I, I don't see how that'd be possible. Ken Wolf, because like I have, I, I, I have to have the screen that the video has, if that makes sense. I'm sure there's some trick we could do to do little snippets, but I kind of have to have the same screen that you guys see so I can control what you see. Right, what, were our, what were our two things that we were going to focus on? We had one. We have one is obviously the video of the Omatum.com site getting redone. Um, but the other one is going to be, geez, I don't know. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. The how to do... We're going to try to do like a little video series on, yeah, how to do a thing. Like, so the idea was it, we, we have one thing that we might do where it's like, uh, vectoring and animating really hard to vector and animate. Well, not hard, but like co c computable things to show you that like, if you were doing front end on like a, a watch website, let's say like it just show you how you could take it from a, a design that you could maybe charge 2000 bucks for to a piece of development that you could probably charge 40,000 for. And I wanted to show people that, like how to do really high polish stuff and kind of like a three-step approach. Like step one would be, uh, do the product development design. And then step two would be make it interactive. And step three would be like integrated in so you could sell it because it's, there might be a lot of people trying to make money as developers and designers, but let me tell you, there is a bell curve that exists. And if you, if you take your job seriously, you want to be on the far end and that far end, you can make a lot of money on the far end. So if like, if on one side of it, it's five bucks an hour, then there's a bell curve like center. That's maybe, I would say the average for freelancers is probably around like 25 bucks an hour. 2540 somewhere in there. Oh, I don't know the data that far end is like, 500 an hour so if you can i want to try to show people some some of the the work that you could do <clears throat> to justify those sort of bill rates because right now a lot of that stuff gets gobbled up by agencies but even if you go work for an agency as a contractor you can get like 250 an hour doing that work i wanted to show it to people because I, I feel like a lot of people they talk about not wanting to do i don't know low-end work but the path to get to the high end work takes years and you got to start somewhere. You have to see what it looks like, if that makes sense. Uh, Kim Wolf, you asked, what are we doing on stream now that the website's up and the video is going to be posted soon? Uh, well, I'm just sitting here flapping my jaw. <laughs> I, I, I have a hard stop at five. So the video will be posted in 24 hours and yeah. 
Hey, Gant. You missed it, buddy. We're just about to get off. Oh, so from now on. Uh, good question, Ken Wolf. Uh, so we have we have some things, right? I can kind of bring up the site we just did. We have some options. We're probably going to spend just a little tiny bit of time. I have to get some content lined up. Uh, but we're going to have to figure this out. So we're looking at doing... Uh, depending on the project, we're, we might do like some of, sometimes we'll stream them and sometimes we'll only stream pieces of them, but we're definitely going to try to do a consistent stream schedule where I might not develop on stream everything that I do, but I want to try to get on like 30 minutes a day. Even if it's just me coming on, we have a little, we can chat and I can show you guys like stuff I've worked on and maybe we can work on a little piece of it. Uh, but as we kind of look at this big list, the one we're focused on is do through. So this is a, uh, we, we got the dot com for it. And uh, what, what we, fo what we kind of figured out was that there's, there's a way to educate people and get people through things that nobody's ever done before. And it's simple. It's super simple. And it's an evolution of, of things like books and things like tutorials. So it's something that we, we have to be a little stealthy about it, but I think, I think it, we're going to make it hard enough to reproduce that we could probably do some of the work on stream, possibly like the, the, the UI work might not happen on stream, but I might, I could do the brand. I'd probably do the UI, UI work solo. Cause I have to go into my dark pit of uh, creative despair and f pull this thing out of the ether. Um, but once I've got that done, we could probably do sections like the front end and whatnot. And BQHR has it exactly right, by the way, for pricing. You always want to do um, value pricing. Absolutely. Like, uh, and, and you almost, you have a fair exchange, right? So if you make a, if you, if you go to somebody and, and you're adding what you perceive as like a, a million dollars of value to their business, you have to understand that like the only way that makes sense is if you bill a fraction of it, like a tenth or a fifth or a quarter but when you do your proposal it's important to mention that you know to mention what you believe your impact is going to be and then show what you're going to charge them as a discounted version of that impact you know i've done a lot like a lot of the consulting contracts i've done that's always the conversation and for really big ones like you might say yeah it's going to be a let's just put a number out there. Let's, you say, yeah, it's going to be, a, it's going to cost you a million dollars to hire us, but you're making a case for like $20 million of impact, you know, and you, you really have to make that case. You have to tell them exactly why and that, why that's not a guest number. And just sort of saying like, w you know, you're getting us at a bargain and we're very interested in working with you, you know? Yeah. At BQHR, you're saying there's not many good UX people streaming on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I like I like I really like UX, but I'm not I'm not the best at it. I think UX I think UX and UI are really hard to do with an audience. Design is generally harder um, with an audience because there's a lot of we got through this pretty quick, but there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of despair you enter into. If you, if you lose your, your insight on something, it, it's hard to get it back. Luckily with this one, I think we carried it pretty well. We started rough, but we finished strong, you know, I'm going to keep it on hypno toad here. Oh, I appreciate that. BQ. Pretty much everything I do. BQ is, is, it's not a template. Um, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. Like you can see other work we did, uh, that bug plug marketing site, definitely not a template, right? Even if I'm designing sort of template-y, I always, I don't know, I come from a, I come from an era where that you just were supposed to do everything. You're supposed to figure out everything, you know? Even if you're looking at somebody else's thing, right? If you're looking at something else and saying like, that's inspiring, I want to do that. That's fine. Just don't trace it, you know? Like just use it as inspiration. 
because on the way to do that stuff, yeah, it takes a little bit longer. You got to make all the, the cases and stuff like that for different things. But on, on the way there, you get some, I don't know, you get some cool stuff to happen. Like BQ, I don't know if you ever saw our Badger app. This is on the list too, as like something we want to launch. And, you know, you made the joke of like people doing to-do lists and that's what we did. And you can see here's like our, this is my to-do list app. And we built this thing out like a real thing. Like none of this stuff is templated. That means that like we got to work harder <laughs> to get it. Oh, I got to buy the shoe rack for the office. F balls. But we have, you know, it's like a pretty crazy little app we built. I had a lot of fun with this. And we got to a point where we still want to launch it. It's just like we're we're trying to negotiate in our minds. Do we want to spend like a couple thousand dollars a year to host it? Yeah, like this is a crazy app, man. I still use it. Boom. I had that thing. Yeah, a lot of testing, a lot of little things we built into it. That, I think, is the only thing that we used as like a library, was that one thing you just saw. It's super functional. Um, like I said, I still use it. I go here and pay my bills, stuff like that. Got all this stuff, yeah. All right. Yes, Boston. I'm glad you're here, man. Boston helped figure this out. This is all uh, it's WebGL, so it's nice and smooth. And this little thing of like, if I hit that button, you see it kind of connects in. That's that's awesome. But this thing is like, it's ready to go. We have to. We. I think I'd really want to readdress what the hell we were doing with uh, the monetization. But yeah. I really like this stuff too, where we go in here and we say like, Hey, I need everybody to do something. So you can be like, boom, assigned to everyone. And now you just assigned a task to 30, whatever people. <laughs> it's kind of fun. You can see here, like who got it done. Ah, so you never, you never do anything custom. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I think it's, it's kind of funny, man. BQ, there's a gradient for sure. So at a certain point, I started working for clients um, and they started to request more template stuff. And then I sort of retooled to only find clients that wanted custom because I, you know, you just, you, you can't justify it. Like the amount of extra time, the additional time that goes into a custom design is, it's not insignificant. And then the support for it is not insignificant either. So uh, it's definitely a decision you have to make and, and kind of find people that will pay you to do that because they want it. But it's kind of crazy, right? Because if somebody said to me, like, I need a backend app that's just for our office um, to do a thing, I, I, those aren't the type of clients that I want to work for. Because I know, I know just from hearing those things that like, okay, I'm going to have to use like something like bootstrap. I'm just like a prototype. They're not going to want to pay a lot of money. Like they're going to see this as like a, I don't know, a small business app. That's for somebody else. And it's not like I, I think that's bad work. It's just for somebody else. Is this responsive? Yeah. Or goes right down to a phone. And even has some stuff in here. Like if I hit that, it shows up down here. Burp. So even on the phone, it works. Yeah, I'm. I'm really. I really want to launch this, but in terms of like projects we're working on, let's see, the one that I think we'll work on next is do through. Um, we may work on Duranki too. But there's so many problems with Duranki because Duranki is way further through this whole, this whole process, right? Duranki just is like, it's there's I need a devil, I need somebody else, I need somebody else who really wants to do it, and thinks it to be an awesome tool, 
somebody that understands it a little bit and somebody that would be coming willing to come to Jacksonville and actually build out the back end. Because I could dual team it with somebody, but a lot of the DevOps stuff that go on there, it's just it's just not it's just not something I want to do. Um, Duranki is a is a platform as a service. So think of something like Heroku, but the main difference in it is, and there are products out there that do this by you. The main difference is that Duranki would start with you on the desktop. So it would it would begin on the desktop and you would say like, I'm building, a, a, let's say like a, I'm building a Ruby app that needs Postgres, that needs Redis, that needs, uh, yeah, we'll just say Postgres, Redis, and, and, and Ruby for Rails maybe it's going to do sort of like a Docker thing and get you that thing working on your desktop. And then you're going to tell it like, I need, now I need to deploy that. And the deployment might go to AWS or DigitalOcean or Linode or wherever. And then Duranki will move that deployment there. But then on the way there, it'll install a load balancer so we can do hot deployments. It'll install a, uh, It'll, it'll separate out the services if you request that they're separate. So you could have, you'll have one server that's just for the, the web app, one server that's just for Redis and one server that's just for uh, Postgres. And then you'll maybe have another server for sidekick workers. And that's going to be a cluster of servers that you can then say, I need 10 of those. I know this sounds complicated, but it's, it's like the bare requirements for an app nowadays, right? To be able to scale like that. And Duranki is just going to be an orchestration platform for that. So we have the design for it done. Um, the, the front end code and getting it working in local is, in my opinion, fairly trivial. Uh, but the orchestration aspect of it is going to take, it's, it's probably going to be fairly trivial trivial to the right person. And to me, I'm going to be hacking it together. So it's a developer tool at the end of the day that I, I honestly think will save people like tons of money. The build method's not working. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why is that not working? Huh. Well. <laughs> oh, it's not a hit ups. It's not a hit ups. Let's update that really quick. Thanks for the let me know. Uh we're I don't know why that's not, that doesn't have an SSL on it. Okay. And I gotta go. I really appreciate you guys though. You're all fucking awesome. You, you helped out a lot. And in the meantime, come hang out on our discord. Uh, if you guys ever want to get some people together and do a Twitch stream where like, we don't do work, just let me know. Like you could just pressure me into that. We can always do a Discord stream too if you guys want to talk. Like we could go on Discord and just sort of like just shoot the shit and we all we could all just get on microphones or whatever. Cuz I really enjoy you guys. I think we got a great community and I know that like we're kind of in and out of that, but you just let me know. We need what we need is we need a community organizer. <laughs> That's what we need. Somebody to keep this fun stuff going. Well, anyways, I better get out of here or else I'm going to keep talking. Everybody have a, have a good weekend again tomorrow, YouTube, check it out. You'll know when it happens and please talk in our discord about it when it does happen. Cause we're going to try to, we, I, we're, we're so excited to show it to you guys, you know, but we just been waiting for the perfect moment. All right. See you folks later. Have a good one.